Hi, this is Andrew Park, and this is the first of two videos on who can be an expert. And this video uh, is about you being an expert. Now, uh, there's a tension between being an expert and an advocate. And an advocate is responsible to the um, organization that they work for, or a constituency that they represent, or a community that they're speaking on behalf of, or doing work that impacts that community. Uh, the advocate is talking about judgment calls, normative preferences on how the world should work. An expert is talking more about how the world does work and maybe what would happen if, uh, if the government made this uh, decision as opposed to that decision. Experts don't often, uh, unless they're experts in normative issues, but they don't often want to go ahead and uh, make those normative claims. They want to stick to their expertise. The other very important thing is that experts have a, uh, an accountability that goes in a different direction than advocates. And this is what makes them independent because experts are uh, uh, accountable to their own community of experts. In other words, they're accountable to the standards that have been developed uh, about knowledge and research and creating expertise and how those standards have been developed by other people in their field. Uh, to which they need to remain accountable in terms of the quality of their work. So advocates accountable to communities, organizations, uh, positions, experts accountable to um, fields of knowledge and fields of expertise. Uh, and this is why a LGBT person can be an expert and can still be independent even though they're LGBT because they can say, look, uh, my field is economics or my field is medicine. My accountability is to that field and to the rules of knowledge and research in that field. It's not accountable to the LGBTI community. So I'm going to render an opinion that is independent of the community. It is dependent on my expertise as an economist or a doctor, or, uh, whatever you have. Now, so can an LGBTI person be an expert? Well, in many parts of the world, you're not going to find uh, many experts in LGBTI issues. So LGBTI people are the only experts that are available. So I feel that they can be experts. And even where you do find experts uh, uh, in, in LGBTI issues, people themselves are experts in their own lives. And there are several different kinds of of uh, groups of knowledge that LGBTI people can claim expertise on. They know their own community, what is feared, what is preferred. They know about uh, identity terms and what it is to live with an expressed identity uh, amongst many kinds of different identities um, that people live with. They can give a reality check. Do police really do this to the LGBTI community? Do banks really ask that question? Are families really reacting this way to LGBTI children? But most importantly, I think, LGBTI people are experts in their own inherent worth and dignity. So many of those stigmatizing beliefs that say LGBTI people are less moral, less productive, not uh, they're lazy, they're stupid, they're sick. LGBTI people can say, no, look, um, I am uh, moral, and I'm a good father, I'm a good mother, I'm a good worker, I'm a good teacher, uh, all those kinds of rebuttals to stigmatized positions LGBTI people can make and should be making those claims. Now, LGBTI people cannot be an expert in what they don't know. So it's a bad idea, I think, for LGBTI people to say, I'm an expert, and then say, well, I heard in some study somewhere. No, you can't do that. You're an expert or you're not. It's very good for, for advocates to go on Google Scholar and find out what is the uh, other kinds of research that's been done in a particular country on LGBTI issues, but don't try to claim expertise um, that you don't have, but feel very comfortable claiming expertise about your own life, the community, preferences, and uh, what happens around you. 
Um, the role of an LGBTI advocate as an expert, I think in large part comes down to participation. So when governments or institutions make decisions that impact LGBTI people, uh, it's reasonable for folks to say, did you include considerations of LGBTI people and issues when you made this decision? One way to make sure that those considerations are included is to make sure LGBTI people are in the room. You want them in the room for two reasons. One is the human rights reason that we all get to participate in uh, government decisions about us. But the second one is substantive. LGBTI people bring a level of knowledge about their own lives and communities and institutions that other people may not have. So participation is the way to deploy, in a sense, or to make real the expertise that all LGBTI people have.